Lafarge SA is a French industrial company specializing in three major products, cement, construction aggregates, and concrete. On 10 July 2015 Lafarge merged with Holkim, a Swiss cement company. On 15 July the new company was officially launched around the globe under the name of Lafarge Wholesome, creating a new leader in the building materials sector. Topic history Lafarge was founded in 1833 by Joseph Auguste Pavin de Lafarge in La Tile, Ardèche, to exploit the limestone quarry in Mont Saint Victor between La Tile and Vivier's. The limestone is white and argillaceous, and yielded an eminently hydraulic lime. In 1864 Lafarge signed its first international contract for the delivery of 110,000 tons of lime to the Suez Canal construction project. In 1980 Lafarge joined with the Belgian coal, coke and fertilizer company Copy to become S.A. Lafarge Copy. Lafarge purchased a plant from the National Gypsum in early 1987. Ten years later, it bought Redland plc, a leading British quarry operator. In 1999, Lafarge acquired 100% shareholding in Hema Cement Limited, the second largest cement manufacturer in Uganda, with installed capacity of 850,000 metric tons annually, as of January 2011. In 1999, Lafarge entered the Indian market through its cement business, with the acquisition of Tata Steel's cement activity. This acquisition was followed by the purchase of the Raymond Cement Facility in 2001. In 2001, Lafarge, then the world's second largest cement manufacturer, acquired Blue Circle Industries (BCI), which at the time was the world's sixth largest cement manufacturer, to become the world leader in cement manufacturing. In 2006, Lafarge North America shareholders accepted a $3 billion tender offer from Lafarge Group, which gave the parent company full control over the North. North American business, removing LNA from the New York Stock Exchange. Previously, the group had owned 53% of LNA shares. In 2007, it divested its roofing division, selling it to a private equity group in a deal that resulted in Lafarge retaining a 35% equity stake. In December 2007, Lafarge announced the purchase of the Oriscom Cement Group, an Egyptian based cement producer with operations across Africa and the Middle East, from Oriscom. Com Construction Industries (OCI). On the 15th of May 2008, Lafarge acquired Larsen and Tobro Ready Mix Concrete (RMC) business in India for $349 million. In 2010, Lafarge strengthened its presence in Brazil, agreement with Lafarge and Strabag to create a common company in cement in Central Europe. In 2011, Lafarge SA announced it would build a cement plant in Langkat, North Sumatra, Indonesia with investment up to RP 5 trillion $585 million. In 2011 Lafarge sold to borrow its stake in their common Asian gypsum joint venture LBGA Lafarge Borrel Gypsum Asia. Lafarge launched three plants in Hungary, Syria and Nigeria and created a joint venture with with Anglo-American in the United Kingdom. The group sold most of its European, South American, Asian and Australian gypsum operations. In April 2013, Lafarge adopted a new brand baseline, Building Better Cities. It reflects the group's ambition to contribute to the improvement of cities by developing innovative construction products, solutions and systems. Lafarge's contribution to better cities addresses some key challenges of urbanization, 
contribute to more housing in cities, contribute to more compact cities, contribute to more durable cities, contribute to more connected cities, contribute to more beautiful cities. In September 2013, Lafarge agreed to the sale of its 53.3% stake in its Honduras subsidiary Lafarge Cementos SA de CV to Cementos Argos for €232 million. Euros. In 2018, the Lafarge cement plant in Kobani, Syria was being used as a base of operations by 1st Marine Infantry Parachute Regiment and United States Army Forces. Merger On 7 April 2014 Lafarge and Holkim announced they had agreed to terms on a «merger of equals». The exchange ratio will be based on 9 Holkim shares for 10 Lafarge shares. The new company would be based in Switzerland and have a manufacturing capacity of 427 million tonnes a year would vastly exceed the 227 million tonne capacity NW Conch, the current industry leader in that category. Lafarge Chief Executive Officer Bruno Lafont and Holkim's Chairman Wolfgang Reitzel will be co-chairman of the new group. Eric Olson, current Lafarge Executive Vice President, in charge of operations will be the future CEO of the new group. Executives from both companies said the deal would save the new company €1.4 billion, Euros $1 billion annually and create, "...the most advanced group in the building materials industry." The deal will face significant regulatory obstacles, as 15 different jurisdictions could potentially raise objections. The cement market in Europe is already tightly consolidated and antitrust scrutiny of deals has been commonplace since the 1970s. To meet regulatory concerns, Holkim and Lafarge planned to sell or spin off assets that generated about €5 billion, Euros .9 billion of revenue in 2013 in areas of large overlap between the two companies. Lafont said the merger was aimed at rebalancing operations, not cutting costs. He said overlapping businesses would be sold, not closed, so industry job losses would be minimal. Industry analysts said the deal would combine Holkim's marketing strength with Lafarge's edge in innovation, while providing significant cost savings, but cautioned, The road to merger clearance will be a long, complex and uncertain one. Others said the deal could lead to further mergers within the industry and give competitors a chance to pick up assets at a bargain price. Most analysts surveyed by Reuters felt the merger would be approved in the end. The acquisition will turn it into the world's third biggest building materials supplier. Analysts said that although it was broadly anticipated by the market, the additional assets expand the company's footprint in Eastern Europe and into Brazil and the Philippines. Given the well-flagged nature of the deal however, these benefits are largely reflected in the price at current levels." Alan Breen of Cantor Fitzgerald Island said, on 10 July 2015 Lafarge merged with Holkim, a Swiss cement company. On 15 July the new company was officially launched around the globe under the name of Lafarge Holcim, creating a new leader in the building materials sector. Controversies <inaudible> 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 Topic: Terrorist financing. In June 2016, France opened an inquiry into the Syrian activities of the construction. 
The inquiry followed reports by French journalist Dorothy Miriam Kellou, published by Le Monde and France 24, which uncovered the shady deals Lafarge made with an array of armed groups, including the Islamic State group, in order to keep the cement plant operating. In 2017 the Lafarge Wholesome executives were investigated for these claims in the civil and criminal courts. Topic: Environmental concerns. On the 11th of July 2008, the Albany Times Union reported that Lafarge's Ravener, New York plant, was the greatest source of mercury emissions in New York from 2004 to 2006. According to the story, plans have been made to upgrade the plant to reduce the mercury emissions. A second story, published the following day, stated that the factory had emitted 400 pounds of mercury annually from 2004 to 2006. In November 2010 Lafarge, together along with other companies, opposes new EPA regulations that require mercury emissions reductions at cement plants. Preliminary data published by the EPA for the year 2009 showed 145 pounds of mercury were recorded for the Ravener plant total on and off-site disposals. The plant has continued to perform within permitted limits. In July 2013, the New York State Department of Health (NYSDO), in partnership with the Federal Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, completed a public health assessment for communities near the Lafarge cement plant in Ravenna, New York. Major findings and results from the NYSDO Lafarge cement plant health assessment. Breathing the ground level air concentrations of metals, e.g., mercury, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, polychlorinated biphenyls, carbon monoxide, lead, particulate matter, dioxins, furans, hydrocarbons, volatile organic compounds, and ammonia released in cement kiln stack emissions is not expected to harm people's health. For the general public, breathing ground level air concentrations of sulfur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide released in the kiln stack emissions is not expected to harm people's health. Touching, breathing or accidentally eating dust that originated from the Ravener cement plant and other sources is not expected to harm the health of people who reside, work, or attend school in the community. Current health status of the communities near the cement plant is similar to the health status of other areas in the region and state. On the 23rd of July 2013, under an agreement with the US Environmental Protection Agency, the US Department of Justice and the state of New York, Lafarge North America Inc agreed to fund 1.5 million dollars in projects to reduce air pollution in the community surrounding its raven New York cement plant. The agreement also amends a March 2010 consent decree that the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, New York and 11 other states entered into with Lafarge requiring the company to limit pollutant emissions from its 13 plants nationwide. Under the agreement, Lafarge North America will adhere to an updated schedule that provides Lafarge an additional 18 months to finish construction of a new modernized facility by the 1 July 2016. At that time, the existing Ravener plant, which remains in compliance with all current environmental requirements, will be taken offline. Lafarge's $300 million upgrade to its Ravener plant includes a new, German designed dry process cement kiln that will replace two 50 year old wet process kilns. The new kiln will use less coal and emit fewer pollutants, including a 66% reduction in mercury emissions, while increasing production capacity. 
It will also take less water from the Hudson River, getting most of its water from the nearby limestone quarry that feeds the plant. Details of the agreement include that Lafarge North America will Invest $1.5 million in projects benefiting the local environment Make additional improvements to the environmental infrastructure at the existing Ravener plant Adopt new, stricter emission limits for SO2 and mercury, and Set a strict, new timetable Complete the Ravener plant modernization project Topic: Board of Directors. The Board of Directors of Lafarge has 15 members appointed by the annual shareholders meeting for a period of four years. Chairman of the Board of Directors and Chief Executive Officer Bruno Lafont. Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors Oscar Fangel. Directors, Philippe Charia, Juan Gallardo, Ian Gallien, Mina Gerowin, Jerome Guiraud, Luc Genie, Gerard Lamarche, Helen Ploy, Bordouin Prot, Christine Ramon, Michel Rolia, Ewald Simandl, Veronique Weil. Honorary Chairman, Bertrand P. Colomb and Bruno Lafont, former members of the board. Guillaume Frering, Raphael de Lafarge, Michael Blakenham, Jean Pierre Boisivon, Alain Jolie, Bernard Cachrille, Jacques Lefebvre, Eric de Warbert de Jean Lys, Michel Pebero, Pierre de Lafarge, Gerald Frere, Michel Bon, Thierry de Rudder, Colette Lewina, Philippe Dalman, Paul Desmarais, Fils, Nassif Sauiris, Hilary Clinton. Topic: Financial data. The following is a summary of data. By the 29th of February 2016, the company had a share value of 17.292 billion euros, distributed in 288,383,057 shares. Topic: Nature reserves. Lafarge also own a few nature reserves. An example of this is Brandon Marsh in the UK, which is on an old quarry, and an existing quarry is next door to it. Another example is the Lacoron plant in France. It was never quarried but Lafarge bought some land and began to convert it into a 16.5 hectare nature reserve. Other nature reserves are Erdington Nature Reserve, Shropshire UK, Medway Nature Reserve, Kent UK, and NWT Besthorpe Nature Reserve, Trent Vale UK. They own other nature reserves. <laughs> 